The sugarcane man represents the garden warlord Joseph Kony, who operated in northern Uganda for more than two decades. Although Uganda is at peace today, the region still grieves for the children who were abducted, killed, and the millions who were displaced from their homes. We dedicate this short film to the people of northern Uganda, especially the children. To this day, Joseph Kony still has not been found, and such efforts have been abandoned. But his legacy of loss remains. global and local audiences, we have a sneak peek into Jamaica's dynamic and vibrant creative industries. This session will showcase successful local producers within the film, animation and music industries right here in Jamrock. The discussion will be led by the Film Commissioner of Jamaica, Renee Robinson, who will be joined by Jamaican filmmaker Storm Salter, whose feature film Sprinter is currently streaming on Netflix. You have to watch it and Sky Cinema. We also have music producer and CEO of Grafton Studio, Mikey Bennett, who has composed and produced music for international artists such as Ziggy Marley, Maxi Priest, and UB40, just to name a few. And finally, CEO of Liquid Light Digital and Jamrock Animation, a man with several advertising and animation accolades under his belt, Adrian Lopez. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good day, wherever in the world you are. Thank you for joining us here at Kingston Virtual Edition for 2021. My name is Renee Robinson. I am the Film Commissioner of Jamaica, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. We are going to be talking about the film, animation, and music sectors in Jamaica. I know you've been participating in Kingston all week, and you've had a wide variety of panels and conferences and guest speakers. And today, no different. We have an absolutely stellar lineup. And in fact, as we were doing our prep briefing right before going live just now, I had a joke with our panelists that their bios were going to be much too long and fabulous for me to read. So um, I will ask them all to introduce themselves as well. But to let you know who it is that's joining you in the room today, we have Adrian Lopez, who is an award-winning animator and CEO of, well, Jamrock Animation, now Liquid Light, initially Jamrock Animation and also VR Studios. So he's going to be talking about um, his space in the animation industry. We have Storm Salta, the, who is probably... I think one of the darlings of the Jamaican film industry. We love Storm, we love his work. He's one of our most award-winning and prolific filmmakers with the most recent successes of Sprinto, um, which is now out on Netflix and on a few other streaming platforms as well. And we also have Mike Bennett, who honestly just an absolute um, veteran and prolific industry member in the music industry. He is a CEO of Grafton Studios with a long history in the recording industry and he has worked with some of the most high profile music industries and recording artists in Jamaica's history and internationally. And you really do have a wealth of knowledge in this, this group with us today. I'm going to welcome our speakers, Adrian, Storm, Mikey, Thank you again for being here. 
and we're going to just jump right in and uh, I'm gonna go alphabetically so we're going to start with adrian <laughs> <laughs> and if you can just tell tell us a little bit about about yourself about your company and what has the animation industry been like for you this year okay um well my company is liquid light digital as you said and we um jamrock animation is actually a brand under liquid light digital so we have um, jamrock animation which focuses primarily on developing our own ips then we have advert 360 which is more focused on the vr side of things so we so we kind of branched out our skill set that we had developed under Liquid Light into Jamrock Animation and Advert 360. Um, we've been around since about 2002, so that's quite a long time. Um, and we've kind of seen the industry sort of change and morph as um, technology has become more democratized and cheaper so everybody can jump into it, but it's also made things more challenging in other ways. It's harder to stand out. There's a lot of content out there and there are, there are new channels out there. So we're looking at capitalizing on all of that. Um, in terms of projects, we have a couple of child children's television shows that we're working on under Jamrock. Um, we have a, a, a feature film that we're working on that we've been working with the British Council um, Film Lab on developing that. And we have a couple of other projects in the works right now. So it's an exciting time. Great. Thanks, Adrian. Um, looking forward to hearing more about that. And well, as you know, I've, I've seen some of the projects in the works and some of the other programs that you mentioned. So definitely rooting for you in all of those areas. All right, Mikey, turning over to you. We're going to the next letter in the alphabet. Oh, um, I've been at it for a while. And I heard my, my bird Aidan say, a um, long time. I was just smiling to myself. I mean, <laughs> Um, I've been at this for a while, from the 80s. Um, we started Grafton, from Grafton Studios in the early 90s, and it's been everything that I'd, I was hoping that a studio, owning a studio would have been. Um, well, I mean, I haven't been there for the past six months, though. But um, I remember before we had the studio, I was driving home at night, and this song came to me, and the song was, was just coming. I mean, you know, sometimes you get a little idea. But by the time I got up um, near Mountain View, I had almost the whole song. And I turned back down to the studio. We had a little room there. And when I went back there, I um, woke up my cousin, who was, the, who was the engineer. I said, listen, we have, we have to put on this idea. And that night, I'm saying, boy, and he's, to me, it's one of the best songs I've ever done. And I think to myself, how much almost didn't get this song. Because, you know, it's the kind of thing that happened now and then you think you'll, you'll remember it tomorrow, but you don't remember it tomorrow. But that has been my journey. I've, I've been blessed by having some really good mentors, including Gussie Clark and King Jamis. And I've been privileged to mentor quite a few young people, starting off with Brian and Tony and Cheville Franklin, and then moving on. And so I, I had, I mean, while at, while at Jamis, um, under the, you know, totally job, Bobby Digital. I met Shabba Ranks and we just hit it off and we, you know, I did an album with him and we were able to do some collaborations with him and home tea. And then one day I got a call from Columbia. Listen, we need, we're doing a Shabba album. We needed to write a couple of songs, just a couple of songs. So through that, I was able to be a part of the Shabba journey. Um, so we had an R&B hit house call and it changed my life, the whole, I mean, I, you know, you're, you're young and you're hoping and you're dreaming about things, but it never, I never even dreamt, my dreams didn't go that far in terms of what it would mean. And even while it was happening, I didn't fathom it, it was later on when, you know, realized that how few people get to have a song on the R&B charts and get to be considered, you know, you're going, you see your name in a billboard or you go to a basketball football game in America and you hear the playing one of your songs. And because we grew up in Jamaica, where we're so close to media, it didn't mean as much to me as it meant to my brothers and my relatives in America. Every time they heard something, it was that. But then again, like I say, I've been blessed. In more recent times, I've had the privilege of working with some youngsters at UTEC under a program called Free Jamaica, Masters in Residence, where we've been able to come up with a template, pretty much like track and field, to sort of identify, groom, and nurture young people. And I did, had no idea I would enjoy teaching as much, uh, mentoring as much, um, under a system. Um, that lasted for two years, but it has left to me this like wanting to do some more of that. So my next thing going to be master classes and you know, 
all kind of things, documenting. And so I'm really happy to be among these giants in this, this other, you know, other side of the, the, the creative spectrum. I'm looking forward to this evening's conversation. Yeah, man, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. And good to see that you are, you're reinventing as well, you know, opportunity favors the prepared. And so, you know, you're taking these opportunities now and shifting into different, different areas. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Although I have to tell you, so just recently I saw, I, well, I screened a documentary that was executive produced by Shaggy and it was talking about the birth of modern dance hall in Jamaica. And when you mentioned, so you're, you're mentioned in it, King Jamie's mentioned in it, you know, some of the people that you've been working with are all mentioned in this, in this documentary that's, um, that I recently screened. So definitely a pleasure to have you here. And to be What's the name of the documentary? Experience. It's not released yet, so... Oh. <laughs> I got I got a sneak freak, you know, one of the perks of being the film commissioner. But <laughs> okay, cool, cool, so, cool. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Mikey. And speaking of film, let's head over to you, Storm. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been working on, what has this year been like, and you know, just yeah, everything that's going on. Yeah, man. Well, blessings. Thank you, um, Kingston, for having me, and also it's great to be a part of this panel. Like, uh, um, you know, I definitely feel like I'm amongst you know, people who are giants and really doing it, you know, doing it for the culture and beyond. Um, in terms of film and my journey, you know, yeah, I'm from Negril, Westmoreland, um, and grew up in a very creative family and always knew I had to make art. And um, somewhere along the line and taking photos and all of these things, I just realized cinema to me feels like the ultimate art form. It just feels like something that combines so many things, um, you know, architecture, fashion, um, lighting, music, so much, right? So, so obviously that's what I needed to do. So I tried to go for that. And, um, and you know, I, when I finished high school in Jamaica, I, I, I didn't leave Jamaica knowing I was going to go to film school, but I just knew I had to go, you know, get out. I ended up getting an opportunity to go to LA Film School, which was very hands-on. And I had a number of mentors along the way, like director X, um, music video director, used to be little X, um, and others along the way that kind of took me under their wing. And I just think I wanted to make films, but there's all these different spaces, music video, animation, art. I've always been making visual art. I'm always showing work in galleries or national gallery, museum, internationally, whatever. And I'm a multi, hyphenate artists, I guess, but to me, it always comes back to film and to cinema, right? So uh, in terms of my projects, sorry, my dog and my bark, hope he's not making too much noise, but um, uh, you know, my first feature film was Better Must Come, which for a first film and for it to be a um, period piece was quite a, a, a large undertaking. Um, but again, you know, we had to tell that story and you know, I was a story about Jamaica, a very transformative time in the seventies to eighties and, um, worked with a bunch of filmmakers to start the new Caribbean cinema collective, which was basically our effort to find a way to make films without really having the elephant in the room, which is the money. You know, how can we leverage all the talent in Jamaica, all of the drive of these other filmmakers, folks who want to make their first short film, have been doing other things. And, and it was a community effort. You know, we all worked on each other's films. We made seven short films, we turned them into a feature film, showed them at festivals, streamed it, did all of that. And, um, and then my most recent project is Sprinter, which also did well on festivals and is now on Netflix and is all across Africa streaming. It, it, it's in over 40 countries in Africa, it's in the UK and it's available worldwide. So for me, you know, um, I've just been trying to build steps and try to make pathways for the work that I want to make. But the idea is every time we kind of cut a path and prove a point and prove our, prove our viability, it's for, it's for a group of us to now come through and just keep building on that. Um, I'm excited about this because I'm really interested in animation and design. There are, I can speak about it a little bit more as we go along, but there are stories that I think animation are best suited for. And I, I'll, you know, I'll speak on that a little more too. Great, thanks Storm. And I also need to tell you a little backstory as well, because I remember coming to Flashpoint 
And it was, I used to love coming down to Negril when that was going on, which was one of those early film festivals um, with, um, I think, was that New Caribbean Cinema and Ring the Alarm was a part of, was that all in the same time period, right? Um, no, 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 it wasn't. That, that time period, we were making a bunch of short films and Better Must Come, the first cut was like, the, the final flashpoint was where we showed the first cut of Better Must Come. And, I think I was know, there. That, <laughs> yeah, in, in Port Royal, yeah. So, no, exciting times. And I think it influenced a lot of the other film festivals that have been in the Caribbean as well. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, absolute pleasure to have you here. So, thank you. Thank you all, gentlemen. And, um, well, as you had started out, Storm, thank you to King Stoon for having us. Um, and particularly to our partners as well, the World Bank and the Office of the Prime Minister for making this happen. So making it possible for us to be here, to have this conversation. Now, as you know, today we're going to be talking about a little bit of a diversion from the core focus of the King Stoon Animation Festival. We're going to be talking about all of the various disciplines. So film, animation, and music. We're gonna talk about the intersection. We're gonna talk about what that means for Jamaica right now, for the Caribbean right now to be a part of these sectors. And so that's where I really want to start us off. Um, and I'm gonna just ask you guys to, you know, encourage, unmute yourselves, um, open the conversation. Um, I want this to be a free flowing discussion. So not like a pointed Q and A to you, to you, to you. Um, but my first, I want us to talk first about, you know, where are we right now? What are you guys seeing as the existing state of the industry for film, animation, music in Jamaica, in the Caribbean right now, you know, there are, there's so much work that has been done and so much more to do. So, you know, from your experience, your perspective, where are we now, state of the industry for film, animation and music? I'll probably ask Adrian, maybe you wanna start because we are leading off with the animation side and then um, Storm and Mikey jump in as well. Well, as I was saying, I think, I think um, this, this is a, a time of great change, I think, um, and the pandemic has helped with that. But even before that, we saw these changes happening where traditional broadcast channels were losing viewers to more mobile on-demand channels. And, and I think as a result of that, we've now got more avenues to, 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 to show our content. And it's just a matter of finding the right, the right channel for your content. And where all that all that means and and along with those opportunity opportunities comes the challenge of course that um there's so many more providers of content out there that it's now more of a challenge to separate yourself and make yourself stand out in that crowd i think that's the that's the essential thing of where we're all heading that's really where it is okay cool storm maggie thoughts um, no i mean I, well i had to research adrian i mean I'm in the industry and it was kind of preposterous that I wasn't as familiar as I should be with it. But I mean, well, I asked Kim Island, of course, she, she really went on about, you know, the thing. But then I did more research. I mean, I know Storm a long time. I know no thing about Storm and thing. But it speaks to something that we need to deal with in Jamaica. How um, somebody as involved as myself in the creative industry, not as aware of Adrian. And like I said, I see this as a new frontier all of these youngsters sitting in front of screens every day and they're making beats and they're making music and they're making that. But it all comes down to creativity. Our dance hall scene, our party scenes are represent almost caricatures of the culture sometimes. People dressed up as this, people carrying on, people over doing things. But it's part of the, 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 the creative um, expulsion, the, the explosion of the Jamaican culture, which is just a wonderful and fascinating thing to be a part of. And I just want to, to, be, to, to play a role in making sure that a lot of the youngsters who have the talent and you know, can feel that here is, a, here is something that I can get into. I'd love to get, a little, get to know a little more about the whole process. I know it's, it has to be very demanding based on what I've seen with a you know, motion graphic person we had at the lab. But um, unlike people from my generation, this generation now don't seem to have a problem sitting down in front of a screen for hours and hours and coming up with stuff. Right now it's majority is audio, but I figure if that once it's spoken up, I mean, you see every now and then you, as Tom would probably see youngsters using them iPhone to come with a little new, you know, new video for the stuff. And it's, this is the next step. 
um, that's the next step of you know the, of exposing the culture, of hearing out the culture, you know, of, you know. So I'm 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 really excited about the possibilities of it and want to be not so far away from it next. You know, I mean, in the next couple of years, I want to at least be hands on to know who the players are, what the potentials are. You know, what I mean, so I can better lend my influence or just be a part of it, get to so have it as another tool to expose our, our, you know, all their creativity. And following on what Mike was saying, I've this always way. heard this way about, um, you know, us being maybe whatever it is about Jamaica's history, whether, you know, the fact that we were a colony and we have these very kind of set ideas of what you should be trying to do, what you should be aiming for, what's worthy. It's taken a very long time for that, I mean, it's still very much implanted in people's minds. Like there's a lot of youths I find that I will meet that may go to school and they're not really set, like that environment is rough for them. Not because they're not super smart, but it's just, you know, it's, it's not so open to like different folks learning different ways. And also the, the, the types of careers you can go for, you still think the only relevant ones, the only ones that can make money are this, you know, the regular doctor, lawyer, yada, yada, yada. And maybe it's a little bit expanded, but the reality is we're, that's still planted. And then there's a lot of youths that because they know that they're not drawn to that, it will ask, even themselves, they will say, yeah, man, me no, me no, me no make for school or me no this or me no that. Like I found that before, but then you find that that same person is a flipping genius mm -hmm. when it comes to motion, editing, sound, um, harmony, like, you know, I've known many of these youths and many youths are just, their circumstances mean they just never had the opportunity to even go to a school that really had certain things. So I've always thought we need to broaden the ideas of what are viable career opportunities. A lot of those classical careers are overcrowded anyways. And in the film industry, as you know, we have some very great film professionals, but if two big movies come here one time, you can hardly, um, you know, yeah. Staff to them with the same level of talent. So true, true. A, a lack and I need. Sorry, go ahead, Mikey. No, no, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, so there is a there is a need. There are open positions. Like I need to find some more folks that are in, say, art department or are in, you know, camera or in it's like I actually need that. I'm always people always, you know, jobs might come to me that I can't handle and I want to move around. But a lot of youths don't even know those opportunities are there. So there's like a link there that we need to kind of connect because a youth who feel like he's not make for school or make for this approach just doesn't realize yet that the thing he wants to do is actually a viable thing. And that's a gap we need to bridge. I know Edna Manley is kind of the, is a school where a lot of our creative kids end, you know, end up going to. Um, and even in that environment, I think we should just keep you know, I just said, Michael, like, oh, you find an athlete early and you, you recognize what, what their talent is and you're fun into the event and you, we need to be doing that. And because at the end of the day, that is why Jamaica is the cool place, Jamaica. It's because of our culture. So let's get, let's get like mechanized about how we pull up this creative talent is my, is my thought. And yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Like high school should be having the past. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think they do. So they do have um, animation at Cape at present moment. But again, you're absolutely right. Like the actual funneling in the same way that we do it for the entertain for the sports industry. Are we also doing it for the entertainment industry? Mm -hmm. You know, and Adrian, you touched on how digital technologies have changed. Mikey, you spoke about that, too. I mean, and so obviously the opportunity for stepping into these opportunities is shifting and changing and growing and blooming, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. are we in fact stepping into these opportunities in the you know the most efficient manner? Well, um, yeah, this is you know, this is this is as you, as you speak about that because I, I've I've had my own thoughts on this, and then I feel that we're 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 tending talking about a colonial background that that, that Storm mentioned. We tend to think of training in the same way we've always thought of training, where you must come in and you sign up for a two-year degree and degree programs and that sort of thing. And I, and I think that alienates much of the target that we're trying to get. And we need to have programs in place where they can work directly in turn with the studios and work hands-on right away, rather than going into this long two-year degree that's gonna cost how much money 
come up with other, other programs, which is what we're working on now, where we can bring in people to train with us and we train them right off from the start to work in a production environment rather than they go and spend all this time in university or in a, in a, in a, in a college to develop a skill that by the time they graduate may well have changed beyond what it was when they started. Mm-hmm. I mean, and Mikey, I imagine <laughs> you see quite a bit of um, that informality in the music industry side of it. Um, but there's always, as you said, there's always talent coming out. There's always people who want to get into the business and who are trying to advance yeah. through these informal ways, right? Yeah, and because of the sheer numbers of, like I mentioned, I've mentioned before, that our student population has exploded. I yeah. mean, in, when I opened my studio, there were probably about 30 students of the kind in, in, in Jamaica. No, they're probably over 3,000. Wow. Right. Um, what it has meant is that there has been a significant fluctuation in, 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 in the level of the quality then. So you start from bad, 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 bad mixes to, to really right. good mixes. But there's an absence, there, there's a need for a structure to, to post, post, post situation, train a lot of these people. So we need a mentorship system, we need a pre- apprenticeship system, and we also need to expose a lot of these people who are doing that to the, all the other areas, the, the, the motion graphics, the film, because the creativity knows no ends. And a lot of people who are doing music now, because I love being in front of a computer, would be well suited to be editors. If you can use Pro Tool and, and mix a song, I mean, with a little training, you can be an editor. Right. You just want to know that, okay, once every year, Storm or Adrian putting on some workshops that gonna say to, to people, listen, or to the government that be, here is something that you need to enroll youngsters because we need to move them to another level so that they can be more employable. And we can start with, I mean, marketing them to the, to the rest of the Caribbean, to the rest of the world. If you want a Jamaican feel in your motion graphics, check Adrian. And Adrian have a whole cadre of youngsters who are going to say, listen, have a, I have a bid for a client. Right now, I have not been to my studio in a couple of months, but I have not stopped working. Mm-hmm. A client called me and said, Sabia needs a certain thing. I have three musicians, three set of people I call. I say, listen, I need a beat for this. I sent to three of you. Usually, I mean, has one of them guys send me back something that I can use. So in other words, it can be remote, but these people were, all of them were trained by Edna Manley, which is like, bring, so in other words, people like myself can utilize talents that developed talent, but also want to, I want to assist in the development of these talents, you know, the helping to place them, helping to identify them, batting for them with governments or with various agencies to fund not hand out, but fund um, um, mm-hmm. education, fund hands-on education. I think Jamaica needs at least a one, um, at, Edna Manley needs to put in a, a reference music so we can know whether we think sound good. And I'm sure Storm would love to see some more, um, you know, CPTs to get more equipped. To, 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 so when people come into him for, as apprentices, they're not coming green with the eyes open. And see with Adrian, some place that him can pass once a week and lecture and do a thing. So some the country needs to recognize what you guys have and what it can mean to developing other youngsters. And that has to be the future. That has to be the goal of some education ministry, some people. And if it's not the goal, we have to get together as creatives and say, listen, here is what we're going to yeah, and I mean, I think it's it's also interconnected as well, because I mean, even so, Mikey, you mentioning that there are, to your mind, currently, you know, about 3000 entities that yeah. function in a studio capacity yeah. of, you know, various, yeah. you know, as you said, you know, some yeah. different quality levels and whatever. Um, Adrian and Storm, what would you estimate? And, and we actually just we, we've just concluded an economic impact study. Um, which isn't it's in its final stages now but even that like are we what would you guys say is the the current state and the current capacity for expansion you know I, I, I think of it in terms of accordion type you know scale up scale down for the animation companies that exist and for the uh, film companies that exist you want to you want to start off from? um okay I, yeah I for me um Let's say I think there's there's opportunity for people in many fields. 
um, here because look, um, for an example, you know, I think for I think for Sprinter, like thousands of people were hired in every single thing from catering, construction, like like go makeup, wardrobe, so in this that like painting, like going all the way through. So so I think um recognizing that that can be ongoing. I mean, one of the things my I'm more pushing into TV as well. You know, so especially what, in terms of what I've been doing for the last year, I've always been developing projects, but what the pandemic has done is it, it created a slowdown in production. And um, I said, okay, let me spend that time to getting all these ideas properly baked. Um, and one of the big goals is to continue to get film projects that are shot primarily here or heavily shot here. But the real goal is to get a TV series greenlit here because then you're talking about six months or more of uh, of locked in things and at that point you have to train people just to sustain it and i feel like and and it, and, <laughs> and i'm gonna say not yet but it's go, it's it's moving it's moving it, it's actually is moving you know we're developing sprinter into a tv series and it has legs it's going places like you know so hopefully i can make some announcements soon but you know and there's other projects that we have in development too but it's like thinking how can we create the a situation where the the money is going to be there because the thing has to be created and then you can kind of fill people in there will be department heads from other places that will come in and they'll need that support so i think a big goal is bringing work here that provides opportunities to get everybody trained and pulled up a bit um and then beyond just big projects coming here um i feel like the just the established industry needs more people i think it can handle more people and i see i see whole new sets of folks enough work with muda here about are you the other people that's sorted like like there's a lot of teams so it's actually happening so i do think jamaica is always a place that people are coming to to shoot stuff our musicians bring a lot of production here there's a lot of production happening here Filming, music, filming our Jamaican talent, photographing them, everything. So there's always need for that. NPR is doing stuff, Rolling Stone, everybody's doing stuff. So I do think that this industry can really broaden out. And if we can do, and I know like animation, for example, because it requires this, as far as I understand it, like a lot, like people processing power. It's like almost factory state. It's, it's, it's art, but you're doing it in this, you know, like start you need way, enough right? people <laughs> yeah, we need we need enough people and i think yeah and i think that's our fundamental problem we don't we don't have enough people especially in the animation and visual effects industry we just don't have enough people we don't have a population of india or the philippines who are who are kicking it in animation now but they don't we don't have that that volume of people so the people that we do have we have to really train them up well and then we can and then once the project's coming in once you have a lot of projects coming in the training will have to happen. As Storm says, it has to happen. We have, we, 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 we're trying to create, a, create our own project. We have our own animation project, but we also have our own TV shows are working as well. And we're designing, designing the show specifically to, to need animation and visual effects. We have, I, I don't know if you remember the, the project that we spoke to you about, um, to, to the Film Commission about um, uh, Dark Waters, the, anthology, the horror and anthology series. We've got 13 episodes already scripted and each one of those episodes are gonna need visual effects and animation. But if they're all live action um, series, currently, yeah. you know, typical anthology um, horror series, but they're all gonna need visual effects and animation. And, and that's something that our studio by itself can't do. So we may have to outsource to Trinidad and hopefully around the region and get everybody together to produce these shows. But I think that's, that has to happen in order to get the volume of people that we need. Yeah. We're a small island. Yeah. So it's, I mean, the, yeah. opportunity, the opportunities are there and, you know, people are willing and are ready and willing. We just, we need to bring them. We need to make sure that they're available and that they're trained. Um, have either of you seen any shifts in global demand? I mean, we started talking a little bit about Jamaica and, you know, we all know Jamaica is the home of cool. So, you know, have, you, have any of you seen any shifts in global demand towards um, identifying more Jamaican content um, or talent? Um, for either outsourcing or for working. I mean, I know productions are always coming in. 
Um, mm -hmm. But have you seen any shifts in that in terms of, you know, just the, the cultural, the cultural legacy seeing, uh, of Jamaica? I think we're seeing more of a call for diverse content. I don't know about specifically Jamaican content, but certainly they're looking for more diverse content, even in animation, hair love and that sort of thing. They're looking for darker, darker skin people to be in, in to be represented in, in film and, and, and television. Um, as to how much that actually plays into what actually gets funded, I'm still not sure. You know, it's it's talk is cheap. But when we go to when we went to Cannes, for example, everybody's talking about diversity content, diversity content. But the number of projects that were actually diverse that got money and got funded and produced seemed to be a lot less than they were talking about. So I'm not sure how much that how well that translates. Yeah. I would um add on to that that I think what happens you know and and I and just in the time I've been like trying to pitch projects to Hollywood basically and to industry people I have actually seen projects that like people are like no nah, don't bring that up to me how are we gonna get a, a, an American in there or how are we gonna do this or how are we gonna to like no no yeah. no keep it in Jamaica no that's what we want right I've and it, it what really I guess makes a difference is not the artist as much as the people in the decisions. Now there's companies that have like more diverse executives. They have consultants that deal specifically with like ensuring your diverse content is not, you know, opportunity. Like, so there is a certain amount of backroom stuff that has to keep changing. I think a lot of time, because you know, some of these folks, if they don't have the experience, they can't, they don't, they can't make that decision. And then so many people have tried to meet the diversity quota kind of, you know, faking it a bit and making poor decisions because it's not coming from the right point of view mm -hmm. and they've been called out on it. So now they have to hire these people. So thankfully, the decision-making boards in the larger spaces are changing the way they look. I can see it in the meetings that I'm able to get and the interest I'm able to get in projects. And I imagine that would align to animation. A friend of mine is a producer, uh, just announced a project which is almost like a, not Powerpuff Girls, but that kind of energy of animation with the, in, Af in Africa and almost like a Wakanda-esque type Vanessa's space. Vanessa's project, right? Vanessa. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Vanessa's project, and I believe Ita Nyong'o um, is mm -hmm. signed on to, to be a part of it. And like that could, that, that exact thing could be from the Caribbean as well. Not the exact thing, but you understand it's, it's, it's ticking the boxes and it's telling the stories that they're not ready to hear. So everyone wants a piece of it. Michael B. Jordan, if it, anything that is like Afro, um, futurist, et cetera, they're on. So, um, and I'm really excited to hear about what you have going, Adrian, and I, I hope that you can move because I think like genre stuff, horror, like all of that is exactly what we need to be doing. And I do feel that because we don't have the numbers, we need to have the ideas to like right. stand out. That's how we win in Jamaica. Like it's so hard to make a movie, for example, and I'm sure like a feature like animated, it takes so long. You better not shoot and miss, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to really hit the mark, it's not enough. You know, you don't have the built-in numbers at home that can support economy, so the subject matter doesn't have to be global. Like, nah, our writing needs to just, like we have to be coming with the ideas, making sure the writing is solid because, um, I think that's how we win. And I think we create IP or new ideas that we own. Then it's like Studio Ghibli. Like Studio Ghibli is Studio Ghibli out of Japan because their stories are just out there. Like the yes, animation yes, is amazing. Yeah. But my, yeah. it's the most mind bending stuff that you can watch. And it is, and, and it's like, I think that's the model that we should go for. And I, yes. I, you know. But Studio Ghibli did have a lot of government support incentives yes. and that sort of thing. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, true. So, yeah, it's, it's just saying, you know, whoever's listening, <laughs> you know, incentives really help, you know, so yeah. that when we do have great ideas and we're looking to bring over crew, production crews to help produce and shoot here in Jamaica, that there's a reason why those investors are gonna invest in this project because they're gonna get, you know, rebates or whatever the case may be, that would really help. Yeah, um, sure. I, I mean, that science fiction, that science fiction um, um, adventure that we're working on now, and that's fully live action. It's, it's, it's set in Jamaica way in the future, 150 years. And it's like, it kind of it takes a look at what Jamaica would look like at that time. And it's going to need a lot of visual effects, a lot of animation, but it's all live action. It's going to be produced, shot like a, like a, like a, a regular science fiction film.
So we're going to need, all that crew can't come from Jamaica, certainly not the kind of camera equipment we'll need for that, camera support equipment, motion tracking equipment, all that stuff's going to be coming from overseas. So all that kind of stuff would be good if we could have something in place that can, you know, incentivize people to come here and produce. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Like Trinidad is done. Trinidad is doing fantastic I things. Yeah. I think, I know we're probably going to be running out of time shortly, but I do want to, um, well, A, first of all, to remind the audience that you can put your questions in the, in the Q&A box. Um, but and but what I, I want us to definitely make sure that we get covered before we do have to wrap is in terms of, and, you know, just moving from that global demand um, for Jamaica for diversity for Afrocentric. I know this has been, you know, music industry has all. There's always been this global demand for the music industry for the Jamaican music music industry. Um, but how are we seeing that translate, or not that, or any other thing? But how are you know where's the uh, where's the money side of it? Um, what are the revenues that are what are the revenues that you guys are seeing across the globe? You know, um, I'm not asking you to tell me how much you make. <laughs> So, <laughs> but just where are you seeing the revenues emerge, the different revenue streams emerging, um, whether it is through, you know, what you're creating and then finding avenues for distribution or export, or if it is working in collaboration, whether it's partnerships, outsourcing, or, um, you know, tour, like where are you seeing the revenue streams for these sectors now? Um, well, the, since the digital age, um, reggae and dancehall has taken a beat in terms of record sales, music sales. Um, however, the demand for the, the Jamaican the dancehall experience, as presented by touring and things, has risen. Um, still, unfortunately, I think enough people not making it to that other level. But it hasn't deterred. It hasn't deterred. Um, unlike film and you know stuff, the, the capital outlay for a song is not that you know crazy. And like I said, with kids, kids doing it in their bathrooms and things, you no, know, the, the 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 outlay is not as much. The what 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 the music has done though is created this appetite for things Jamaican, you know, brand Jamaica. So the experience that people have going to a dance show or a reggae show or spending to come into Jamaica and going to the various parties, stay with them. And it, it is by osmosis passed on to family members. So people looking for this kind of thing. So uh, um, even, even, even things like the patwa, how we use our languages and things. Um, and I think I must, con I mean, I must congratulate Tom for how effectively, like, like you know, in... They, they, they have not abandoned the, the Jamaican in, within the films. I mean, in other times you'd hear, you know, the people with this crazy like a pseudo accent that does turn off me and most Jamaicans. So we kind of, I'm happy to say that we are proud of the accent and realize how powerful it is, even if we have to put a little um, <laughs> type something below it. Um, the, 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 the challenge in the internet is going to be how to monetize. And I just got off some, some feedback recently that although our album is not selling so much, the streams for you know the, the, the you know the YouTube channels and you know the stuff that people in podcasts have, have been going up significantly. So it shows that there is interest. I was talking to someone from Africa recently and they are so excited about wanting to bring because she she's a you know professional in Africa and she said in Nigeria to be and she says the the the, the, the the, every, I mean, she feels so proud to be a Jamaican because everywhere she goes, somebody wants her to sing, somebody wants her to dance because of how we created the thing. And she just wants us to find a way to monetize this world interest. And don't leave, I mean, a lot of times we, we think America first or, you know, West first. Um, but Africa is there, loving the colors, the raw and the stuff, things that we're putting out and things. Another friend in Ghana was telling me that they have these dance hall video parties where they just go and all that is on display are some of the dance hall videos and you know guys sit and drink and and for hours and spend a lot of money so that part of the culture is also very very exciting so um anything anything that can up the 
you know, give, give these things a chance to cross over. But one of the things that benefited us in Jamaica, me personally, was when our music started to cross over into the R&B charts and stuff and realize that, hmm, we had a little tweak in buying an American remix and thing without, without um, diluting our thing. We can turn it over to somebody to give an American interpretation. Um, so it worked, you know, so you, get, you end up with a house car or you end up with a, you know, Shaggy's album or things like that, which is what Sean Paul been doing. It not happening for enough of us, but the fact, but still, and all the audience for Jamaican stuff, uh, Caribbean stuff, is continues to grow, and is just waiting for the next set of superstars to be unleashed, then to be discovered and trained with that kind of thing. Well, I'll jump in. Um, so I was thinking that in terms of where the money is, um, it's it's. If you're a, a creative that works in, in audio visuals, you're a director like me, I, I direct commercials as well. Um, and I do think, you know, the commercial world work, you know, doing advertising or branded entertainment or whatever, definitely is a big, you know, props up a lot of the creatives lives. That's like, that's a lot of the creatives, almost day jobs, you know, is doing this commercial, doing this and doing that. Every once in a while, you need to make great art doing that stuff because sometimes the right project, I mean, you know, if you're doing a commercial about, you know, a can of beans, you might not be able to make great art. But if you're doing a commercial, you know, about a brand that is, you know, aligning with lifestyle or sport or something where the, 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 the art, and, you know, all of that comes in, all of a sudden, you know, you have the equipment and a palette to really do something that's visually great. I mean, I find... A lot of the tricks that I learned and try to put into my films, I test it out on somebody else's equipment and somebody else's shoot, you know, <laughs> so that I can um, pull it in. So there's definitely always a cross section of the corporate commercial world um, that keeps a lot of us going that um, is not going to change. And I think we should build out more expertise to be able to provide more services. You know, I remember doing commercial campaigns here where, you know, certain things they want to feel like we have to go overseas to get and um, and I don't think that should be the case. Like, and I do see a lot you now, you know, like things are at a point now where that's not necessary. Like there's no aesthetic or style that is not achievable by our local, say animators or VFX folks. You know what I mean? For the most part in that world. So I do think we need to build out our ability to service that industry in Jamaica, in the region, internationally. Like when, you know, these international companies are selling, sending people here, like they don't need to send all of their top, people like a lot of times you know at a certain point puma realized man why are we gonna keep flying in directors to do this shoot with bolt when we know that storm can do it you know that's really what happened because i was putting up in the position like by maxine walters and her team to even be on those sets and to show what i could do but once you get it on your show now they're like no okay yeah he can do it we know what he can do and i think we need to show that we have international ability um in terms of the other money, like, yeah, we are making films that can be put on streaming, that can be distributed. I mean, there is a certain level of quality, storytelling, awareness, et cetera, that you need to kind of hit. But if you hit it, you can find a home, you know, you can find a home. And, I, and a lot of these, and it's going to keep changing in a year, it's going to be even more intense and people are looking for localized content. So I think like you can tell your Caribbean story. We just, just have to get to the point where you could watch it in another country with subtitles and feel like, yeah, we, we, we're doing it. I do think that a place, we have a lot of talent and the place we need strengthening is story. We have so much great literature to be adapted. We have so many great young storytellers. I think we need to strengthen our ability to tell stories that connect on a global level and to put that into all of the things we put out and then we'll be, we'll be really cooking on gas and really turning out a lot of stuff that can cross the, cross the waters, you know? Um, Cause I think that's kind of key. You know, it's key for our work to hit outside of Jamaica. Also another thing in this viral time, I know time I run, you know, there's these youths like the Prince Pines and so on who are so talented and they're doing it with their phone and like a mop and a bucket and the low fineness is what's kind of funny about it, but the creativity is absolutely endless. And if your idea is good enough, it will go viral. 
just send it to, you know, ZJ Sparks. And if she like, you know, she go and drop it on her Instagram and it's going to go zhoosh, right? So it is really down to the idea stage. And if um, production can kind of match up, you know what I mean? I think like if you make a five minute thing that is genius, it's going to go viral and you have to build on that. One more thing. Sorry. Someone made a fan video of like, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? They made, What If Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was a dramatic series and they did a, a trailer that nobody asked them to do. They just did it to prove what they could do. That is now becoming a series, right? Because it went viral, right? So, <laughs> you know, just take yeah, the steps. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I think I think um, I mean all that all that is is it's fantastic to hear those stories, but I think also at the same time we have to remain realistic about about the whole model of filmmaking and and, and, and revenue because we were introduced during the film lab we were introduced to the to the revenue waterfall by some overseas producers who came in and they were and they came and gave us some seminars on on, on the whole idea of revenue and how it how, how it all breaks out and they and they gave us the, the harsh reality that. Lord of the Rings has yet to turn a profit. People have made money off it, but the project itself has not made a profit. So when we're going into this, into this whole filmmaking and animation feature films, you need to have an understanding of how that works because you can get in, in, in problems, committing a lot of time and effort into doing something that will never really see the light of day because there are many other aspects that are not gonna happen. So you need to re research the project carefully, look at other ways to earn money repurpose your skills, repurpose your, your content, your media into other things that can earn money, especially when you're look at, look at what people are looking for, what they need and cater to that rather than coming up with something out of the blue and saying, hey, buy this. Look at what people are looking for and, 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 and tailor make a product to, to fit that, whether it's promoting their product, their services or whatever the case may be. But don't, 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 don't expect them to buy what you want to make. Consider making what they need and sell them that. I think that's another way of looking yeah, at it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is, that's definitely a cinch. And I mean, well, Adrian Storm, you guys know this about me, but I'm all about the business. And so mm -hmm. as much as we know that we need to be able to have persons who are trained in the technical craft of stuff, one of the, the core factors that we need are people within our industry who understand the business of entertainment. Right. And I know this has also been something that has has plagued the music industry is because everybody wants to be an artist. But, you know, who's handling the business, who's handling the money, who's right. making sure that, you know, as Adrian, as you mentioned, these the, the waterfall economy or, you know, any of the other types of structures which are um, which are prevalent and which are well known in other economies, in other jurisdictions that have mature and robust entertainment economies. All of those structures that are that are embedded, those are some of the things that we also need to start becoming having a mastery okay. on. Right. So, uh, you know, I think that that's definitely an area that, um, you know, we look at what it is that we have in terms of our, our, our cultural legacy, what it means to be a Jamaican creative. Um, what that means in terms of competing within an international marketplace, being able to create what it is that the audiences are demanding, whether it is film, animation, or music, there's always a demand from an audience. So looking at what it is that we're going to be able to create for that, to meet that demand, ensuring that we have the resources and the skills that are on the ground. And as you said, Storm, you know, a lot of our international companies, I mean, we, the math that we've done is that now we're probably about maybe 65 70 percent local crew when an international production comes in they're just bringing in heads of departments at this point mm -hmm. so you know we're seeing some of that starting to shift now and a lot quickly a lot more quickly than it had before um and then of course you know even in terms of music and finding things like synchronization opportunities for jamaican music within any of our screened based projects because there is always this this vibe and this demand for the jamaican music and many times that is what draws people to our screen products as well i'm sure stormy experienced that with sprint on the soundtrack you know mm -hmm. so trying to make sure that those interconnections are there but definitely definitely like bringing it back home to saying that we need to make sure that we are also understanding the business of things and that we're structuring our business deals in a way that's going to become viable for all of us as creatives in this space.